Folks, I will tell you this is a fight for the freedom of America. This is the heart and soul of America. Economic security is national security. And I'm tired of hearing it'll be next year or this affects it five years down the road. As Adam said, we are 50, approaching $50 trillion in debt. It's going to be more so as time goes on. It, the interest alone will exceed the, with the defense budget. And I would say when you add Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid to it, we're far greater than the 32 that we've, we've been talking about. It, the, the spending for the last, since 2018, has increased 33%. Folks, that's unacceptable. It is unacceptable. Isn't it ima imagine we're trying to give the taxpayers back money. We're trying to redirect funds. Uh, there is no reason in the world with our military budget that we ought to be, fo we ought to be having spending on woke programs. Uh, we stop that. We've got to stop that. There's no reason in the world we ought to be putting money for an FBI building. And if you want to stop a program, cut the funding. And that's what you're seeing the patriots behind me and the House Freedom Caucus willing to do. Because, folks, if we don't do it now, tell me when. And I'm just excited that we're addressing it now. Uh, we have got 16 days left to get the appropriations bill out for the next budget cycle, which is October 1. Uh, we're out in, in, in August, but hopefully we're going to address it. And we're going to, as has been said, as Bob Good said, we want the 22 levels uh, and we want no rescissions, no smoke and mirrors for the American people, folks. It's time to present a budget that, that is, trims the fat goes to programs that will defend and protect this country. Uh, we ought to be spending money for ships, for planes, for cybersecurity, not for transgender surgeries, not for puberty blockers, not for the woke programs, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Folks, the program, what we're voting on today should not be a social experiment, and that's what the programs have, come, have become to be. Um, we are going to, you in the next... 16 days, you'll see it play out where we examine all the 12 appropriation bills and let the American people decide, are we being unreasonable? The problem with Washington, D.C., the reason it's broken, every dollar spent has got an advocate for it. The problem is we need an advocate for the American taxpayer, and that's what we're going to do. Basically, what we're going to watch over the next several weeks is, is the House of Representatives going to keep their word. When we passed the Limit, Save, and Grow Act earlier this year, we made a commitment to the American people we were going to reduce spending. We were going to freeze the spending levels, and we were going to make sure that we removed all of the woke spending programs that the Biden administration has put forward over the last couple of years out of the spending, because that's what the American people sent us forward to do. And the only way that we're going to be able to make sure that we do that is if we see all 12 of these appropriation bills totaled up so we know what the total spending is. If they're, the leadership believes that they're going to be able to trickle these out two at a time, three a week, four a week, that's just not going to be feasible because we will never be able to see what the total spending is until the very end. And when we then try to uphold our commitment, our word to the American people that we will not push spending beyond the $1.471 trillion for non-defense discretionary. And if we have one piece of legislation left that we have to try and make up 50, 60, 70 billion dollars, that's not going to be acceptable. We want to see all 12 of the appropriation bills. We want leadership to uphold their end of the deal. And that way, 218 members of Congress that voted to curb spending, to rein in spending, can actually get the job done. I heard the minority leader speak last week when we passed the National Defense Authorization Act. And he said, you know, this is woefully irresponsible. It's woefully irresponsible. It was woefully irresponsible what they've been doing for the last two decades. They have gutted out our military, and then they wonder why as they sit in their rooms and look at each other and see why is the recruitment numbers down across the board. That's why. Because the brave young men and women that have the ability and the desire to defend our country are concerned about the people that are actually running the enterprise, the mechanism that's going to help them do that. So what you will see is who's going to stand up for the advocates, for the regular people across this nation. And that's what you'll see over the next couple of weeks. 
And when I think about the $32.6 trillion worth of debt that we're racing towards $50 trillion worth of debt, I liken our economy to the Titanic. We're on a course, and there's a collision ahead. It's a big ship that turns slowly. But if we course correct today, we can avoid the disaster that lies ahead. The current path, trajectory we're on is unsustainable. And we owe it to the American people to make cuts. Otherwise, like the Titanic, this will end in catastrophe. Even if you move to the 2022 levels of spending for discretionary funding for non-military spending, that $1.8 trillion in spending will be borrowed. Every penny of that will be borrowed. So that you're looking at $32 trillion in national debt today, a year from now, it will be in excess of $34.5 trillion because as we finish out the fiscal year and move on. That's what you're looking at, the national debt, which is a threat to our national security for many reasons. And I encourage my colleagues to join me, and I call upon uh, the speaker to bring my bill. The national debt is a security threat to the floor. $1.8 trillion more in national debt, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I have strongly encouraged us to go back to 2019 non -discre excuse me, discretionary levels across the board. Wouldn't it be nice if for just three months or six months, we didn't spend more than we brought in every month? But on average, on average, we spend... Oh, about $125 billion more every month than we bring in in revenue. And that's even when we had record revenue. It's not a revenue problem here. It is a spending problem. And the only way we get it under control is to have the courage to say, you know what, in 2019, pre-COVID, nobody was saying, gee, we're underfunded. We're, we're too small as a federal government. Nobody was saying that. So why not get back to those 2019 levels? Well, I thank you for being here. We're sounding the warning call. We're reminding our leadership you, you need the votes. And we're begging our leadership, listen to us. Do not take us on a further irresponsible spending path and tell us that you're, tell us that you're, uh, I want to use that dog uh, ra and the raining thing, Matt, that <laughs> Representative Rosendale tells me all the time. Don't tell us it's raining when it's not. Don't tell us it's raining when it's not rain. Let's have the truth. Let's be honest. Let's allow participation from the American people, but also their elected representatives, all of us.